What's up guys, so today I want to share a story with you, a story about how I once again managed to make Esperanto useful to my real life. And then after that I want to share with you my plans for my adventures in Tokipona land. But let's start with the story first. So, if you've ever met me in real life, you've probably come to the realisation that I have some type of affinity towards this rare, obscure, strange language called Esperanto. Well, you guys have met me through the internet, so you know I've got that type of interest, but most people, of course, wouldn't know that or be able to pick it out on the street or even know what Esperanto is. But I've always managed, when meeting a new person, in some way, shape or form, managed to worm the knowledge of the existence of this language into our initial conversations. But I've always done it in such a way that it's managed to pique the opposing party's interest as opposed to making them look at me like I'm some type of cultish weirdo who's here to convert them. And I've always, after that, left out further information and waited for them to come to me to ask more information before I share more about the language. Because I know once is enough, twice a little bit too much, three times you're starting to be weird and then 20 times after that, okay, please stay away, I'm deleting your number and getting a restraining order. But today I want to talk about how I've managed to make this of use in my current company. See, when I started in this company, one of the first things that I always do on my resume is I include the fact in my interest that I speak this language and it's actually a very good thing. I made a video about how that's have been of benefit to me of the past because it always makes you someone who can be easily remembered by a company because they like, oh we've just seen like 30 candidates who all have the same skills. What was that one guy who was speaking about some random weird language? Yeah, he was, he seemed quite fascinating. Let's give him a call. So it's a good way of just like making yourself stand out. And then obviously after I start from the company you always have that a uh, period of time where everyone wants to get to know you, know a little bit about you, your interests and stuff. Usually people put, talk about sports and movies or like some concerts they're going to and then you've got this one guy over here who's talked about the international events he's attended and how he's bumped shoulders with random professors and ambassadors and all sorts of stuff from around the world and of course that makes things interesting. But again, I always share as much as they want to know but never overshare because that's the secret my friends. But people are aware that I do take part in this language and I've always told them that it is a kind of subculture as opposed to some idealistic grand dream of things. I do share a little bit about that but I always kind of talk about it as a subculture because cultures are easy for people to understand. Now this has been of great benefit to me recently. See, for my company in which I work, it considers itself to be a highly progressive large international company. So they've brought out a lot of things that basically push that progressive ideal. An example being that if you have less than 10 leave days at the end of the financial year, they give you more leave days, like a bonus five leave days, which is really cool. It's a kind of way of incentivizing you to use up your leave days rather than building them all up into one giant heap. But that's basically one of the goals there. The second thing is they give you something called a flexi day, which is basically a day that you could use at any time you want for any purpose, it does not matter. And recently they came out with a new one. It's called a culture day. Now this was a day that was basically stated to be for those who are highly religious and want to take part in one of their cultural events or have some other type of really important cultural event to them. But you have to prove that it's an actual thing. It's not just something that you're making up. So obviously you had a bunch of people who were like, I want to celebrate May the 4th because you know I'm a Jedi. And they got rejected. But then you've got little old me over here who's like, hmm... Well, Zamenhof Day happens to be a Friday, and it also happens to be just before Christmas, so I could extend my leave, therefore I could apply for Zamenhof Day as my cultural day. Now, of course, when I went and applied for this, the first thing my boss said was, what is Zamenhof Day? And then I get a little bit further ability to be able to explain to him what Zamenhof Day is. Zamenhof was the creator of our language. He becomes more fascinated because, well, he knew it was a created language, but he didn't know anything about how it was created. And he starts asking the questions and I start giving the information. By the end of it, I say, so, do I get my cultural day? And he says, look, we all know this is a thing for you here. You can have your cultural day. So I'm getting one extra day off this year and it is to celebrate Zamenhof Day. So if you guys can do that in your companies, totally go do it. One, it brings awareness and two, you get a day off. Okay, so now what do I want to talk about regarding my adventures in Tokipona land? So take a look at my screen here. So someone recommended in the comments that if I want to learn Tokipona this time, then I should be 
uh, trying out this course here. Apparently it teaches using the comprehensive input method. As you can probably see over here, I've actually watched through one video, but I wasn't really watching it, I was at work. Uh, so I wasn't really focused on it, it was kind of more like just background noise. But I am a massive fan of the comprehensive input method. In fact, if you guys didn't know, I have an entire YouTube channel called Learn Esperanto Direct Method. I don't often upload here, but I have made, I think, how many videos? Let's have a look. Um, I'm up to 17 videos where I teach Esperanto using direct method without any other language, simply using Esperanto and gestures and pointing and stuff like that. So when someone told me that something similar exists in Tokipona made by this guy, I was hooked. Now, when I saw that there was 36 videos in the series, well, you had my attention. Now, you have my full attention. I totally forgot that quote. What was it? It's like, before you had my interest, but now you have my attention. Or something like that. But anyway, I'm planning to do at least two videos out of this series every day. And I plan to, once a week, give you guys a update on how I am going with this Tokipona course and whether I think it's going to, like, work well for my needs, etc. Because I do want to finally learn this language because the amount of random comments I get in Tokipona all the time, it's almost becoming compulsory at this stage. And unfortunately, I can't just Google cheat my way out of it because, well, there's no translator that I'm aware of. And if there is one for Tokipona, probably don't let me know about it. Otherwise, I'll get lazy and I'll just use that translator. But I'm hoping there's not one because then that will give me... <laughs> Another reason to really invest in learning this and if you guys want to really push me just keep leaving comments randomly in Tokipona And I'll learn the language uh, Anyway, that's my plan. I'm going to go through with this if you guys have got other recommended resources for me Preferably good video resources because I am a video man. I love videos clearly. I'm a youtuber uh, Just drop them in the comments section of this video and I will let you guys know how I go in this new journey of mine along with all the other languages that I have been leaving uh, learning. So I'll speak to you guys next time.